three blades to cut the length. I'm making a short sword. I have a carbon fiber rod there. And my next step is to glue them and put them back to back. And then I'll come back and show you the rod. I'm using a piece of foam as a glue applicator. I'm just dipping just a little bit on one side and I'm using it like a squeegee. So I'm pretty much just putting it on, squeezing it down. I'm not going to record much more of this. I'm going to put two layers. After it completely dries, I'm going to put a second layer on both of these and then slap them together. This is a trick I have been told and taught by uh, one of my crafters. I'm pretty sure I'm not doing it nowhere near as clean. It's about two inches of 11, 30 seconds uh, vacuum tubing. Um, you can kind of see how much I have shoved onto the pipe and the rest is going to be backfilled with uh, hot glue. I uh, just heat up a little bit, shove it in there, heat it up again, and kind of push it on in. I'm going to cut it off here in just a second. The tube I heated up to slide on there. And that's going to give us a lot more rigidity to our tip. At least that's the plan. Steven Scroll is the one who showed me how to do that. All right, I got my first two blanks moved together. Kind of hard to see down there, which I got them glued together. And I got a squeeze and I rolled the uh, air bubbles and such out of it. Um, then I'll go ahead and throw some weights on it for a few minutes. Not too terribly long. That's just to keep it from peeling and rolling on me. I typically don't have too big of an issue because uh, that rubber cement, um, which I'm using just to well wood dap, rubber cement, whatever you want to call it. Um, just using that to attach it. Alright, the next step is to uh, either cut or in my case I'm going to route a channel here in the middle for my rod. Now mark this spot up here to accept that a lot better. You can kind of see that. Um, that will go in there. That way it's going to open up. The blade I have here, this on here is a 3 8 uh, rounding bit. Or a 3 8 straight will work, but this has kind of got a real round curve to it. And I just, I have found it just snugs that. And that's another trick I learned from uh, some scroll. Um, and that round bit, you can see that. I mean, that's the exact diameter, that 3 8 is the exact diameter of this rod. I mean, you... all right, I got that cut out. Next thing I'm gonna do is come back and clean all these edges up. I mean, I, you know, stuff like this. You know, it's cut down below it, but I just need to come in and Take a sharp razor blade and you know, cleaning that up. It's gonna be hard to do one-handed. That was hard to do two-handed. But I'm just gonna clean that up. And essentially, the final product should just more or less sit right on in there. One of the things I did not mention um, today, look at that. You can't get but again that is snug like it's sitting in there with gravity by itself it's already snug in there you can kind of see that profile of those cut it's 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 rounded there you do have no room in there there is no wiggle room at all so that's a good nice snug shit fit i did the same thing here when i did and i cut i just came to the left and went down Came back to the right and went down. Just perfectly did that. You can kind of see. You can kind of see, but it's got a curvature to it. And that'll help that sit in there a lot easier too. Um, you know, the whole the whole purpose is you don't want this 
you don't want this rod shifting on you down the road. We've had some early, early uh, additions, early copies, early tests where it has shifted on us, whether the glue didn't hold enough um, or, you know, just had too much room. Um, I do hand run this, and that's why they're, you know, it's imperfect. It's got some wiggles to it, but it, for the most part, it's pretty good. Um, so the next thing to do is glue it up, and then we'll have a weapon blank. Once I put that in, and I put that on top, glue that down, and that'll be a weapon blank. And we can come in and cut it how we want to make a weapon out of it. I got glue in there and it's drying. What I also do is I get glue on here also. And I just got a coffee can, a little small coffee can with a whole bunch of nuts down at the bottom or a whole bunch of bolts for counterweight. You can do sand, whatever. And that's so I can put those in there. And I mark my mark so I don't need to bring my glue any further. And that's, that's to go in there. So what I got is the 3 8 rod, I got another piece of the rod, got it directly underneath, it's perfectly down the center, and I weighted the very, very edges, very edges, and pushed down a little bit, not a ton of weight, but enough that it was bowing that out some, so that way when I come in here in a minute, I don't have to fight these edges so bad, I can try to put it directly down the center, I'm going to tip it straight down like I'm chopping, and let that go in there. Alright, the rod's in there. As you can see, it is in there nice and snug and straight. You can see none of my edges puckered in as I pull it, put it in there. You know, I thought that was puckered in for a second, but it's not. So what I'm doing here is I just got, I just set my brakes down beside. And uh, I'm just kind of using them as almost like a vise. It's just kind of squeezing in. And that way it doesn't come back apart. Because I put it in wetter. Put that in before it normally dries. This is the only step the entire thing, entire time, I will put a piece in wet. I'll put that in just just tacky wet versus um, dry to touch like normally when I have uh, rubber cement. So I can't stress that enough. That's one of the things I do. But I also will let this sit longer before going to the next step than I, I typically do with everything else. I'm done. I mean, I, I, could, I typically, as soon as it's stuck, I'll wait it down for a minute, but you know, four or five minutes tops on each each step on drying. This, I go a lot longer than that, because I just, I really want to make sure this is in there nice and snug before I go to the next step, because this is, if this is screwed up, there's no reason to keep going. All right, but the next step is glue slap together. One thing I didn't point out earlier, I do mark my edges. And typically I mark the tips too and I did. It's hard to see. There it is. So I mark my edges and I mark the tip. That way when I come in and try I'm lining everything up, I got three points of references to line stuff up. And then I just kind of just roll it and make sure I'm staying square all the way down. I, uh, I pre-cut my foam on a table saw uh, to make blanks just like this. Um, and I wasn't talking about this earlier. This is two pound, uh, two pound cross link probably, I don't remember exactly what it's called. Essentially the short name is EVA, but it's, it's EVA foam, uh, it, but it is the two pound uh, weightage on this, the two pound density. Uh, this is a three eight thick uh, piece. I do get alternating colors. The reason being is you can see on this weapon really, you know, this is one. You can see I have contrast colors. So when I go and do my bevels, I have something nice and clean to, you know, to shoot for. That ain't the cleanest. I was working on a new project, a new different way of doing that. Um, I'm still fairly learning on this whole EVA weapon thing. Um, and this one's more or less a failure. You can kind of see the spot there too. I maybe have salvaged something that other, but I wasn't happy. Uh, but yes, I use contrasting colors so I know 
where to cut to where my center point piece is. I don't have to go worry about going back and redraw or, or anything like that, which is what I was doing. I was going back and remarking everything when I had all uh, solid color. But that has helped me out tremendously. Looks like. If you wonder what uh, why these bricks look kind of odd, they're fire bricks. Uh, I dabble in blacksmith also, so uh, that's something I just had sitting around. So when I built my forge, uh, that's actually a, this piece of metal here is a little bit over 35 pounds. I'm just rambling now, but y'all can deal with it. That's a striking anvil that I have to get a stand made for. It's uh, pretty solid. Uh, mile steel, 35 pounds, and it's it's a beast. Uh, I like it. That is in there. We got a nice start for a blank. So I'm gonna let it dry a little bit more. I'm gonna go grab me some tea and then finish it up.